this lecture is going to wrap up our discussion of cancer. It covers a few things that haven't been covered in the previous lectures. Remember, we talked about mutations. Cancers are caused by mutations, which are any kind of change to the DNA or your genetic material. It's very hard to determine a specific cause for a specific cancer. It takes multiple mutations for a cancer to occur, and cancer is generally not detected until years or even decades after the initial mutation. Our cells develop genetic mutations throughout our life. We probably have thousands of genetic mutations in our bodies. The vast majority of them are harmless. Mutations that cause cancer are called carcinogenic mutations. Most of these arise from environmental factors. A small percentage of these are inherited. This isn't the cancer that's inherited, it's the risk of cancer that's inherited. Is cancer contagious? Um, some cancers actually are. It's kind of scary to think about, right? There are two cancers that I know of that are transmitted from one individual to another. Dogs can transmit a specific kind of cancer through sex. Yeah, one more reason to get your dog spayed or neutered. And Tasmanian devils, like this little cutie here, can transmit a facial tumor cancer through fighting. In humans, generally speaking, cancer can be contagious through organ or tissue transplants possibly through some blood donations. But you can transmit certain viruses that increase your risk of cancer. Of course, the first one I have to talk about is HPV, human papillomavirus, also known as genital warts. Most strains of HPV are not that big of a deal, but there are some strains that can cause cancer of the cervix, the penis, the anus, the mouth, and the throat. Over 99% of cervical cancers have evidence of an HPV infection. Guess what? There's a vaccine for that. The vaccine is against the strains that are, cause most of the cases of cancer. We're already seeing a decline in cervical cancer cases since the vaccine came out. Unfortunately for HPV, condoms do not stop the spread, unlike a lot of other sexually transmitted diseases. There are chemicals that can trigger carcinogenic mutations. Carcinogenic, carcino refers to cancer, genic origin. Carcinogens are the chemicals that cause these mutations. There's a lot of different chemicals that do this. A lot of them have some increased risk, but not a lot. Others, really nasty. Use of tobacco products, not just smoking, but also um, vaping and chewing tobacco and things like that. Those contribute to 90% of lung cancers. Most lung cancers come from smoking. And nearly 100% of cancer of the bladder is caused by use of tobacco products. Alcohol contributes to liver cancers and seems to raise the risk for cancer recurrence. Gasoline, 
air pollution, pesticides. These are all known carcinogens. So that lawn service that comes around and puts stuff on the ground and puts little flags saying, do not walk, they mean it because those chemicals can increase the risk of, of various kinds of cancers. Skin cancer, of course, it's UV radiation, primarily from sunlight that increases the cancer risk. Tanning beds, yeah, they still produce the same kind of radiation that you get under the sun and will also increase skin cancer risk. The good news is if you monitor your skin for changes, the majority of skin cancers are curable. Now, it's much easier for people with pale skin to spot these changes. It's m harder to see these on darker skin. And a lot of doctors are not trained to spot skin cancer on dark skin. They're trained on pale skin. So that means that the darker skinned people, while that dark skin protects you from this UV radiation that can cause skin cancer, it also makes it harder to detect if you do get it. Humans do need to get some sunlight in order to make vitamin D. Vitamin D reduces the risk of some cancers. It's very important for healthy bones. Ideally, you'll get it with sunlight exposure because too much vitamin D can cont contribute to kidney problems. So what's gonna lower your risk? Amazingly, some pretty easy things. Exercise, and it doesn't have to be Peloton or gym rat kind of exercise. You know, go going for a walk for half an hour, five days a week, which I know for a lot of people at your point in life, it, it's kind of challenging to get that time, but it does reduce the risk of cancer. A diet high in plant material reduces the risk of cancer. Maintaining a healthy weight. Obesity produces higher levels of potentially carcinogenic hormones. Exercise lowers those same hormones. Getting the HPV vaccine, using sunscreen when you go outside. Remember, nearly half of all cancer cases result in long-term survival. There are people who have been cured of cancer. You can reduce your mortality risk with early detection. And you can reduce your risk of getting cancer by avoiding known carcinogens, especially tobacco products. And as I've mentioned here, exercise, eat more plants, less animal products, drink alcohol in moderation, not at all, get the HPV vaccine, wear sunscreen, all of those things will help. And I was going to say them all on this slide instead of the previous slide, but I'm not gonna go back and re-record this. So here you go. And that is the end of our discussion on cancer.